In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the two stocks that I am buying right now. Let's get down, let's check this out. So a lot of people always ask, like, what is uh, my current portfolio looking like? Well, as you've seen a few weeks ago, this was at 240. It is currently now sitting at 275. It's been going really well. However, the ones that I am adding to right now that I wanted to share with you because I think that they are fantastic investments is BlackRock. I've only added a few shares, not a ton, but a few. And I've added four shares and the market value would be equal to about $4,270. And then the second one I am adding to, which is a little bit bigger of an investment, is of course Bank of Nova Scotia adding 100 shares worth about 8180. And this was the other day at 8105, and I think it's quite a bit higher as of right now. I think it's about 70 80 cents higher. So the first one I'll talk to you about is Bank of Nova Scotia. The reason why I am investing in Bank of Nova Scotia right now is uh, a little bit fewer of a re a little bit smaller of a reason than I normally would, but right now it is one of the more expensive when it comes to PE ratios. It's a, one of the most expensive uh, banks in Canada right now. So normally I wouldn't be investing in it. Normally I'd be looking at more like a CIBC and a TD, which I do think are also fantastic investments at this point in time. But the reason is, is that dividend percentage. And there's a huge reason why I'm saying this. So it's currently 4.45, which I think is the highest, I'm pretty sure, 99%, 99% chance sure that right as of right now making this video, that is still the highest dividend percentage out of all the banks. The volume is definitely there. I'm never going to complain about that, but the biggest thing is that dividend. So let me explain why I'm saying this. So basically when it comes to the Canadian banks, they have not been allowed to raise their dividend for over a year now. And it doesn't seem like it's going to be able to change anytime soon. Basically what they are looking at, the government official people, whoever make this decision, basically they're looking at when this pandemic is going to be over. So what a lot of analysts are currently expecting from what I've been reading is the banks will be able to raise their dividend either the first first quarter of next year or the last quarter of this year and when you're looking at the banks right now being the highest percentage that's going to probably continue into the future and when it comes to Bank of Nova Scotia they've been doing pretty well when it comes to earnings uh, pretty good really to be honest and they seem to be really hitting on all cylinders. Very recently, a couple of uh, a couple of quarters ago, their CEO came out and said that they had a cheap stock. And again, they had a high PE ratio versus everyone else. So to me, I think that they really see a lot of growth coming once the pandemic is over and that they are still a cheap stock. Another thing that I possibly will think about is the fact that all the banks will be probably raising their dividend between somewhere between 8% and 15% is where I'm currently guessing once they are allowed to raise their dividend once again all of the Canadian banks I read a report the other day saying that the banks are currently having more cash on hand than they ever have before and when that's the case usually they will raise dividends but they can't so that cash keeps on building that dividend is going to be even more bigger their five-year chart, as we can see here, has not really done all a ton, really, over the past couple of years before COVID. Now, COVID did hit, and all the other banks were having the same issue. Uh, Scotiabank having a little bit more of an issue than the others for in this period of time. However, they did bottom out, and I was starting uh, to look at them here, and I was buying around here, I think it was. And then since then, it's exploded up. It then somewhat consolidated before the recent earnings. And of course, now it's going to go to where? Who knows? However, I can take a guess. I can take a guess that it is on its way back to its all-time high. And if that is the case and that happens, then we're looking all good. But again, the reason for why I'm buying this is because of the dividend. And as we can see, the dividend's been 90 cents forever. We can also see that they're not doing too terribly. Of course, 2020 was not a great year, but they are now going back to fantastic earnings. They have also had three outperforming quarters as well. 
And there are a lot of analysts who are currently saying to buy, hold, or strong buy. We also see that they are above their current price estimate by analysts, but I barely ever really pay attention to this. I don't pay attention to what analysts are saying at all. And the reason why I say that is because analysts usually will have a motive to say what they are saying. So we have seen numerous of times that an analyst will come onto CNBC and say Tesla is only worth $400, yet they're worth six, and yet Tesla then goes to seven, yet now it's come back down. But when you start looking at some of these analysts and then you break down what their bank is doing or what their financial institute is doing, not necessarily them themselves, but their institution is shorting Tesla, that's when I start having issues listening to analysts. And then BlackRock. This is a brand new addition onto uh, my portfolio. It's PE ratio is 25, which is not too bad for an American stock, to be honest with you. It is in the financial sector. And then it does pay a dividend of 1.88%, which is not huge to be honest with you, but there is a reason why I'm saying to invest in this right now. Check out this five year chart. Since COVID, it has been an absolute ride all the way to the top. Now it's starting to come towards the top and sort of slowly starting to level out now if it does level out that's totally okay it can sit sideways for a while i don't mind but we have to remember that blackrock is a financial institution that really does specialize in investments and investing is becoming bigger and bigger there are more and more and more all the time people starting to learn to invest in the stock market or just through their companies they may be investing into different ETFs and mutual funds and most of them are going to be holding the BlackRock name. I know when I was working at Best Buy that Best Buy, their retirement plan, a lot of their funds were through BlackRock and they did perform really well. I'm not going to ever hit against BlackRock. They're... they're their funds made me a ton of money in my for my retirement account at Best Buy. And I'm going to say right now that BlackRock is a very good institution. And when it comes to more and more people looking to invest, understanding, hey, it's not a scary thing. Because we were always taught, even myself, we were always told by our parents that you have to really watch out what you invest because they have seen so many crashes before. But you have to invest smartly. You can't be always following those meme stocks that go up high and then crash. You have to understand how the market's going. And when it comes down to it, funds are the easiest way because they're going to be usually when it comes to an index or maybe a certain sector. And of course, that's just a lot easier for the random everyday a day person to follow than following maybe 20 30 40 stocks that they currently invest in so these are my two picks why i'm investing in them anyways i hope that you've enjoyed today's video if you have hit that like button and subscribe and i will see you guys again next time